gauge. I'm going to turn on the power. You see this thing is blinking green. That means it's accelerating. It will blink green until it's uh, finished accelerating. This is the uh, simplest hookup of the Railroad Concept Station Master. Uh, I want to show this right at the beginning of the film before I get into more detail. Uh, I'll go into more detail later about some of this stuff. Uh, basically, we have our transformer over here. This is our transformer. Two wires coming out of our transformer, with the red one being the plus, into the Station Master, which is located over here. And you need to make sure that you have the plus of the transformer connected to the plus terminal of the Station Master. If you get them reversed, the Station Master won't do anything. It, need, it needs DC power and it needs the plus terminal connected to the proper point. You can't use pulse width modulation, uh, pulse width modulated DC, and you can't put AC into this Station Master. It has to be DC. So we've got our two wires from the transformer going into the Station Master. Here's the output of the Station Master going to the two track terminals, to the two track rails. So basically power from the transformer over here into the Station Master, coming out of the Station Master on its output terminals and over to the track. And then over here we have a single reed switch. The reed switch is underneath the track. So that reed switch is connected to the deacceleration terminals of the Station Master. And this setup will perform a simple automatic timed station stop. And by the way, I should mention we're doing this demonstration in uh, S gauge. I'm going to turn on the power. You see this thing is blinking green. That means it's accelerating. It will blink green until it's uh, finished accelerating. Now it's solid green. That means it's cruising at full of speed, so to speak. So we'll do that until it gets around here to the reed switch. There's a uh, magnet glued on the bottom of the front coupler housing, which trips the reed switch. You can see this thing started blinking red. Uh, while it's blinking red, that means it's deaccelerating. Now in a second it'll go to a slower blink there. Now that's pause state. It's, it's adjusted for a pause of about five seconds. You can go all the way up to 30 minutes. There's about 10 variations of pause length you can have. Again, we're back to the gl blinking green and then solid green, so we're running around the loop again. So what this does with very a very simple wiring arrangement gives you an automatic uh, time station stop when the train will keep going around the loop until it gets to a certain point where you put the reed switch, the uh, magnet on the bottom of the locomotive, or it could be on the bottom of a car, will activate the reed switch and cause the train to deaccelerate. And the uh, acceleration rate, uh, the deacceleration rate, and the pause times are all adjustable. The uh, Station Master will go through its slow down the speed, stop, pause the train and hold it at the station and then start it back up uh, sequence. It will go through that sequence whenever uh, it sees a read switch, which is really the same thing as saying whenever terminals 1 and 2, which happen to be the deacceleration sensor terminals, whenever they're connected, uh, when the magnet goes over the read switch, it, it essentially connects that circuit briefly. You can accomplish the same thing by holding a wire between terminals 1 and 2 briefly, or you can actually hook up a, a push button between terminals 1 and 2 cause to stop. But, but what I want to show here is you can actually have multiple station stops. What I've done here is connected a second reed switch. That's what these wires are. The second reed switch goes over here and it goes underneath the track over there. So 
when the train encounters that second reed switch, it will also make a station stop. So what we've got now here is two station stops in the loop. So let's turn it on again and watch. You can see it went through its blinking green uh, for startup. Now it's up to cruise, and in a minute it's going to come to that second reed switch. Now it's back in the blinking red, which means deacceleration, still deaccelerating. Now it's going to the slow blink, that means it's in the pause state. Again, this is adjusted for about five seconds here. Blinking green, that means it's accelerating. Still accelerating, blinking green. Now there's solid green, it means it's in cruise, top speed. Here's the other read switch, again back to the blinking uh, red, deaccelerating. I think you get the idea. Uh, you always, ideally, you should have a little bit bigger loop than this. I've got as much track as I can squeeze on this table in a loop, uh, but they're kind of close together. These should be a little further apart. And you can really have as many station stops as you want, just till your loop is big enough, you know, to, to have enough space for the train to deaccelerate and accelerate again before it hits the next read switch for the next station stop. Here we've got the same setup as before. I've taken the second read switch off. We only have one read switch again for a single station stop. Uh, what's different is there's now an American Flyer steam engine on the track, and I'll start this up. These are a little more difficult to control because the motor goes back to the 1950s. That's when the engine was made. Uh, they take a lot more amperage, and they're harder to control at low speed. So it's more of a challenge to use these with these using the American Flyer engine for the automatic control, but it is doable for one of them. And you can see the same thing is happening. Blinking green as it uh, slows it down, but still deaccelerating. Now there's the uh, slow blinking, uh, blinking red. Should have said blinking red a minute ago. The slow blinking red. Now it's uh, blinking green. It's accelerating again. So the, the station master is controlling this American Flyer steam engine, uh, the same as it controlled the uh, SL for service diesel in the previous uh, video clip. These just draw a lot more amperage, so they're, like I said, they're more difficult to control. Uh, it'd be better to use a, uh, put one of the replacement can motors that you can get for the Flyer engines and put that in. It would draw less amperage and give you better uh, slow speed better slow speed control.